Hello, Jeff. It's nice to see you, but you're not in your regular confines. Where are you? I'm not. It's, you know, it's Thanksgiving week. I don't know when people are listening to this, but it's Thanksgiving week. So I'm up. Oh, there. do you celebrate Thanksgiving by like dismantling your house and going down to studs and simple uh-huh. backgrounds? Is yeah. That how you celebrate? I go get new doors. Okay. <laughs> I'm in the Pacific Northwest. Oh. Where my wife's family's from. So it's in it. And true to form, it's raining buckets right now. Oh, okay. And is it so, cold off of the, off of the sea? It, yeah, it's it's a colder cold. It's a it's a wet. It's cold. a deeper cold. It's a deeper cold. Yeah, it's it gets the cold you get in Colorado is mostly for show. Yeah, it's a little. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. Um, now, before we get into today's topic, which we're going to try to run through rather briskly to keep to keep things brief for people, today, like Nest Tea Ice Tea. That's what we try. We try. It never works, but we try. Um, you know, we spoke to you some time ago about your business. We did a whole episode about you taking the plunge from uh, getting off of the corporate teat, if I may. You can, do can that. use that kind of language. I'm sure, it'll be bleeped out, but that's what it's I'm uh, it's colorful language, anyhow. Um, and going off on your own, voyaging into the unknown to create your own business. And I don't know, that was maybe a year ago. And did it flop? Didn't go well. Had to had to pivot pretty hard. I now I now it just it turned into it was communication coaching. Landscaping. Well now it's spray on bedliners. Okay. I, I, <laughs> right. So how did how did it go? We we talked about communication. How did it go? It, it's gone great. I I I you know, I'm thinking of the people who are listening who are like me, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I, I, I just it. I've had a couple of calls with people recently who have, who have asked the same thing. How's right. your year been? And they haven't. I've been talking to them in a while, and I am almost abashed. Like it's gone great. I don't know what to say. It's gone really, really well. Um, you know, to people of faith, I'm able to say God's just totally taken care of us at every turn. I thought. I thought, okay, we're going to, I'm going to quit my old job and I'm going to go out and it's just going to be, you know, uh, uh, using sticks to beat the bushes and get the birds out. And I haven't really had to do that. They've sort of found me to some degree and it's been a great year. I've loved the freedom. I've loved everything that I hoped my, and my family had hoped it would be, it has been. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to, to detail the benefits of being out on your own. But before we do, I just want to tell the people, this isn't a guy who had a dream, I want to be a movie star, and then went out on a lark. This is a guy who did due diligence and spent years and years developing expertise in an area, and then said, I can hang out my own shingle because I have what it takes. And he had proven at his company that he had what it takes not only to attract clients, but to develop new content. That was one of the, that's one of the magical things about you is that you can see where there's an opportunity, develop a new class or a training. And, and because you can write content, uh, you, you got a, you got a unique, uh, window on opportunities. So I'm really delighted in that because I think a lot of people dream of, uh, going out on their own. And maybe because of fear and uh, the security of a paycheck that they know, they know it's coming, they know what it will be, and there will be benefits attached. And I don't know if I can find medical insurance on my own, which isn't easy, et cetera, et cetera. Then they kind of stay put. And I, you did a great job the last time we talked about your uh, career path in illustrating, hey, that 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 has been you. You have been the kind of guy that wants to take the safe route, but you felt God pushing you out into like take a chance. And I think it's so cool to check back in with you and go like, what can I say? Um, the Lord has met our needs. So um, have you replaced your previous income? Yes. I would say that's the ding, ding, ding. Uh, you win the golden prize if that's happened. Can I... Can I uh, it, can I say that if certain things fall in the next month, we may have doubled. It, it's, that, it, 
is unbelievable. And I, I just, God has been incredibly generous. It's just been, he's just been as generous as can be. And as somebody who knows Jeff very well, I can just tell you that if you had told him a year ago, make this leap and you might double your income you would go, oh, I don't know. There's some kind of cartoon character like, you know, I don't know, Droopy or somebody. Dro- Droopy kind of had like a secret strength that, that was kind of funny. But there's uh, there's another cartoon character I can't exact picture right now, but he was just, oh, gosh, no, no. Get going, scram. No, 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 no. Would you elaborate on the benefits of being your own boss as opposed to working for someone else? Uh, yes. W- one is when I worked at the company, and God bless a company. You know, they're they're it's people, a great company, so people, great company, and people who are running a company. It's, it's so it's so funny. It's like I would call the company I worked for a big company. That was a business. But but yeah, but it was a couple who started their own thing. Like, right. so, but they, you know, they were, any company is always going, I want you to think like an owner, you know, be like an owner, think like right. an owner, behave like an owner. Well, when you own your own business, you're doing that. And so uh, there's, there's been, you don't have to sort of fake it. Well, I'm not an owner of that old company, but you want yeah. me to think like one and act like one. I get that that's to your benefit and that will probably help me get a promotion and do those kinds of things. But now I'm doing it honestly and going, well, I'm literally thinking I am the owner. I'm the owner. So there's a certain amount of, it, maybe this is just dopey cliche to say, but you know, there's that passage that says all of creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. And they Love actually, it. The actual phrase right. is all of creation waits in eager expectation for the mature sons of God to be revealed. Yes. And, and I can't help but think that there has been joy for me in this last year of feeling like God has matured me. Mm. And so that's one of the intangible benefits. Uh, the money is obviously a benefit. I, I, you know, between you and me and the, and the teal wall, just us, uh, it's just us. Um, so I was just on a call with someone I hadn't talked to in about a year, uh, early this morning, she's in Belgium. And she was asking and she said, well, now that you're out on your own, you probably work a lot more. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so there, and I don't think that will always be the case. I mean, there's definitely seasons like, you know, there were a few weeks there where I was traveling a lot. And so I was definitely, you know, going, going, going. Uh, and you know, you, all that to say, I don't feel the, that's a real thing. That's a real thing because you're on the clock and you feel a responsibility when you're on the clock. I can speak for when I worked for a church, I've got all my stuff ready. I've got, I've planned out, but I've still got four hours. Uh, Maybe I could straighten up the closet (laughs) because you're just thinking, I mean, I'm getting paid for this time. So what shouldn't I be doing something? But you, you know, now, well, I'm in charge of my own deal. I know what my month looks like. I'm in good shape. Why do I need to, why do I need to click around on, on a computer? I'm, I'm, why don't I just go be with my family? So that makes a lot of sense to me. If some, if, especially if somebody's done what you've done, which is build up expertise and then go out on your own and you're a commodity in your field. And you know what the going rate is, and you are no longer, uh, you're no longer splitting profits with the company that's supporting you, really giving them all the profits, but they're giving you a, a portion of that in your pay. Now you get all of the profits. Well, it makes sense that you would make more money for the same work. And so you wouldn't have to work as much. That seems yes. obvious to me, it- unless you were to build a staff of 10 people. Now you're talking about more work. And that, and that is, uh, yeah, I'm not currently looking to build a staff, but you're right. I, I think going back to filling up your day, there's a, the Parkinson's law says, however long you have to do a task is how long it will take. Uh-huh. And that, that's very true when you're working somewhere. 
when you're on your own, that sort of goes away because you're like, I don't need to take all eight hours to do this. Yes. I mean, I remember thinking, well, I've got eight hours. I don't have other client stuff. I'll take all day to I'll do this. I'll take my time. Now I can, not you rush through it. Um, but be efficient. Just do what you need to do. Be efficient. And then it, that doesn't mean, oh, I've done what I need to do today. I'll just go, you know, lounge. Uh, but there is, there's some of that, but then there's also, okay, you know, going to the Todd Henry thing, what am I doing to, um, to feed my craft, to get better with some of that time? I, and I felt freer to do that on my own than I did at the other place. And then, um, what am I, uh, you know, I'm always thinking, what can I do today that will make me happy, uh, that I, I do the things you'll wish you would have done. You would have done. So if three months from now, I'm happy that I put the hard work in early on, then, then that's always a good thing. Going back to the staff thing, I'm, I'm looking at next year and things have gone again well this year and people are like, well, are you going to hire people? Are you going to hire people? And you read all these business books and it, gosh, it's like the beginning of every business book is, let me, let me tell you about some people who started their own company and they got in way over their heads because they're <laughs> like, I'm going to build this, this and this. And I'm so glad I don't have to go from up to down, but mm. I can do honest building. My brother-in-law, he is a uh, successful, he runs his own business in Houston uh, as a home designer, Brick Moon Home Design. And Brick he, Moon Home Design. Is this a uh, Abrahamic Jesus lover? Times well, 10. Then, then let's throw out Brick Moon Home Designers in Houston, Texas. If you need a great designer and they do awesome work, and we've known this dude for a very long time. He's Jeff's brother-in-law. Use Brick Moon Home Designers. They are all aw- like they're they're you will you will get uh, you'll have fun looking at their house uh, page or their uh, their homes are unbelievable. Beautiful. Jeremy had, that's the guy, Jeremy McFarland. He had basically said, you'll know you'll need to hire someone or at least contract someone out when you find yourself saying no to something. Right. And I thought that is a really good litmus test instead of, well, I just want to start building. No, no, no. Just say yes as much as you can. And when you finally get to the point, you're like, oh, I have to say no to this. That's your thing. Well, I would specifically say people that you say no to that you wish you could say yes to. And that's true. Yes. I'm not because saying I yeah. think a mature business, you learn you 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 gain the right to say no to business that you don't want. That's right. And then when you find yourself saying no to things that you wish you could take, that's the time to go, wow, do I need somebody else? That's exactly right. I've got a a, a large workshop in March in California. And normally I'm like, keep it lean. I'll do it. I got this. All the money will go to me. That'll be fine. But when you've got 30 people for a workshop and you're doing breakout sessions, well, I need somebody else. So yes. th- there's a gal who I'm going to bring in for that. And it's like my first time bringing someone else. In. Oh, it's great. Sort of weird. It feels like, feels like a little bit of maturity. And again, I'm just so step. I'm grateful. I didn't start out going, let's bring a bunch of people in. It's a, it's a, it's a classic entrepreneur mistake. Yes. To try to, we want to look that we're so successful. And so we're going to uh, over leverage uh, staff. And then we're just going to hope that we land big dogs that will help pay for the big staff that we've already signed on. You're, you're chasing your tail in that scenario. I don't like it. Mm-mm, I've never like liked that. that. We I'll just say this as a general rule we the businesses that me and my wife have run we have never over leveraged ourselves we haven't bought things on debt one time when i was running a hair salon did we go out and look for funds and it was for a grand total of fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> and um the f- the first profits that we made was to pay those people off we don't do things in debt we just we're not trying to be showy, you know, we're not trying to act like, Oh, we own the world. No, we're just trying to be faithful. So let, we'll get to your travel. Uh, you mentioned California. L- let me just, uh, I don't know if you would say this, but I'm going to put these words in your mouth and you react to them. When you are, you mentioned kind of being the owner as opposed to like trying to do the thought experiment that you're an owner. 
Do you find that when you're either out in society or even with your small group of dudes, you feel more upright that, look, I make my house go because I run my business and that when something is out on the table, you feel a little more authorized, a little more agency to go. I don't think we're doing it that way, fellas, because you've kind of grown the I run something muscle. I, I'm as opposed to I'm always waiting for people to give me the right, the, the things that I need. And is there an opening for me? Do you think there's an opportunity? Might I be up for the promotion? Suppose you're like, no, I run this. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, I, I, I would never have put it that way. But as you say it, all I think is you do a whole episode on the, the, the unconscious mindset shift that happens. Yes. Yeah. You're exactly right. Without a, without a doubt. Um, when you're, I don't know, I'm, I don't want to bag working for a company or an organization, but when you do just, maybe there's an unseen cost that happens that, yeah. that we, we're not aware of, which is you do the things and we'll, we'll tell you like plaintiff. I, I hope they add this to the benefits package this next year. W wouldn't that be nice? Oh, oh, gym memberships. Oh, that that's great. We would love a gym membership. It's slave. I mean, well, I, I don't know. I, yes, I'm, I couldn't agree more. You feel you, you don't know it until a, you get out and B uh -huh. someone articulates it back to you. But yeah, I do feel a little more of that kind of, look, I've done this in my job. I can obviously do this with some kingdom thing here. I, yes. I don't feel as, again, you don't, you don't feel as um, under the thumb of someone else, or maybe this is if I had to boil it down in a job where you work for someone else, you're constantly waiting for permission yes. or seeking permission. Yes. And after, when you go out on your own, you're not, it's yeah. your permission, like, yes. or God's. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. I think that's an that's a unspoken uh, cost of working in an organization. Yes. But maybe the positive is there is an unspoken benefit yes. of, of feeling a little more uh, the only The only thing I want to say about that, because I don't want to besmirch people who are working for somebody, it's a great, it's a great gift. Yes. You know, it's fine. Um, but what I want is I want men to run homes with the agency as if they're business owners. I just sat down with a guy just this week and I, he's not a, he's not a listener. Can you believe that I would spend time on somebody who's not a regular listener? You're, you're trying to flip him. <laughs> and I spent the whole time. I mean, I showed them, don't you think these are good episodes? And then I showed and I said, let's just sit, let's listen to two minutes together. And then you tell me, no. Um, but uh, I, I found myself kind of giving a pitch to him kind of going like, you know, you're the man, like mm -hmm. you're the guy in your home and you have the right to lead your family to God. And you don't have to wait on the education minister's permission. And it, it, it you know, I could just kind of see the penny dropping with him. And go, yeah, you know, you're right, et cetera. But mm -hmm. it just struck me that, um, there's a different, I was also with my friend, um, uh, Michael Beausajour for several days last week, and he's a guy who has run his own business for a bit. And he just kind of has that. He carries himself like, well, we're, I'm here to make this happen. So like, if you walk into the pizza place, he's like, I run a business, you behind the counter are part of another business. We're trying to negotiate. We're two people together. And again, not the sort of well, what does the policy suggest? Hmm. I mean, what, how do you guys do things? It just, it's a different way of carrying yourself. And I, I just want fathers to walk in that kind of confidence and authority before God that they can, they can do whatever, he, whatever goes into their hearts to lead their families. So, well, are, are, maybe y'all said this at one, on one episode, for some reason this is in my head, but every father is an entrepreneur. Yes. You're, you're, you're running your home. Yes. And I, 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 that is a hard for guys like me who are not entrepreneur minded necessarily, that's a hard, that's a hard leap. It's yes. so counter counter current. Um, it's just not that's, how why I I, that's why I think what you're doing 
it's such a great, it puts your brain in a different space and you could, you, the way that you get to run your business, what's the logo of your business? Well, it's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> when you get the logo, you go, I don't like that. We're going to do something else. There's nobody to check in with. It's you. What does the website look like? It's whatever you want it to look like. And to take, to take your family and do the same thing. What's the look and feel of our family? What are the rhythms of our family? They're whatever you want them to be. And it's, it's, it's tough for us to get our brains in that space. So could we say that there, I guess to use Paul language, you take off your hat, you remove that thing that is that, you know, Paul talks about a hat being like this barrier between the man and God. Oh, right. right. The head covering. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe yeah. there's like this mentally taking off of a hat. That's right. He says it's inappropriate for a man to have a covering on his head because it's supposed to be direct. The hierarchy is direct. You get to go right into his office and you get to make negotiations, not like a, a worker, not like a subordinate who's been there three years and is hoping for the next promotion, but as a son who is up to inherit the entire company. You get to go up to him and say, Dad, I have some problems with the way that things are working here. I'm suggesting that we start a new program, that we start selling this way. And, and the father looking at you trustingly across the desk, well, son, you've got a better look on those things than I do. Why don't you go for it? How about this amount of money to start that program or whatever? That's the, he doesn't want any middle management between you and the father. I think it's a great a great picture. Well, just try not to go on about this, but I, it, it makes me think of something I haven't articulated or really told anyone. And you can correct me if I'm way off here, but I've, I've had this feeling in the last few months that um, I, I guess I thought, you know, taking the hat thing off. Okay. W what that means, I have direct access to God to sit with him and he can tell me directly what to do. Okay, great. I, I've felt in the last few months that actually what it's meant is God going, I don't know, what, what what are your thoughts, Jeff? And I'm going, hang on, I'm not sure if you've if you've seen the the org chart here. You're God and I'm little man. Totally. And I, I think he's going, I don't know, man, what what are your thoughts? <clears throat> well, maybe this. And God's going, all right, that sounds good. All right, let's let's go in that direction. Or Talk to me about that. Convince me of this. And it just like something in me goes, I wasn't trained to have that relationship. Right. That's exactly right. So, okay, let's go back to your first verse. All of creation is waiting for the mature sons of God to be revealed. So it's great when somebody's born again. That's nice. And, and, and in church world, we're led to believe that's kind of the zenith of evangelical life is when someone is born again. I friggin hate that, that that is held up as the greatest thing. That is not what creation is waiting in eager expectation for, for the newborn babes in Christ to be revealed. That's not what the drum roll of eternity is waiting for. It's for the mature sons of God to be revealed. You don't get to that place where all of creation is excited and fulfilled and overwhelming with joy because of your maturity. You don't get there without a couple of magical ingredients. One of them is suffering. Another one of them is responsibility. Another one of them is intimacy. Another one of them is obedience over years. I'm not talking about a, a bold step of obedience. I'm talking about obedience over and over and over for decades. Now, when somebody has those ingredients together and the, and the mature of God, the maturity of sonship is revealed in you, heaven stands up and applauds for that. That's what that verse insinuates, that there's this maturity to you. Now, I think it really, you just said, I didn't plant, I didn't plant you saying that's not what I was trained for because we are trained in church world to sit in rows, listen patiently. There's, and that's the, that is so very Christian of you to wait your turn, 
listen, give when the need is presented to you, try to help someone else be born again. Well, it usually doesn't work. That's okay. You just wait, you just wait and be patient. And there's kind of this smallening of man that happens over time. But what is supposed to happen? What it's the pleasure of God to give the kingdom to little no, children right. like you. Yeah, that's right. He wants to give you the kingdom. Mm -hmm. 99% of the time we would say, I wouldn't know what to do with it if you gave it to me. Don't, don't give me the kingdom. I, I'll just stand, I'll just stay here in the row. And when the next event comes, I'll try to attend. What do you mean it's give your, me it's the your kingdom? kingdom, God? It's yours. It's like... it's all yours. And he goes, I don't. I'm not trying to raise people who will um, just fo follow in my wake and to do every, what I want to do is I want to raise up mature sons that I can hand the kingdom to and they can get after it. Now the, tr the trouble with, I can't, uh, it excites me to talk about this, but the trouble with what I just said is people who are immature want the kingdom given to them prematurely before they've been broken. And you read something like Hebrews 12, and it's very clear the Lord wants to smush you into powder first. Smush you into powder so that your self-confidence is gone, so that your self-reliance is gone, your desire for glory of your own is gone, and everything that you relied on in your flesh, you go like, well, I know that it was nothing. It was nothing. And that's a great place to be. And it's not where we're supposed to stay. We're supposed to be raised back up into his image. Then he goes, I want to give it to you. And we go, I want it. So a man, let's say, a, again, we're, I'm kind of, we keep borrowing back on our, on our Abrahamic steps to glory, the kind of what we think of as God's plan for life. If you think of someone who was raised in a Christian home, they have, they have, the kingdom precepts laid into them from childhood. When they come into their twenties, this, this dude is pushing against the bit. He's, he wants it. And the Lord goes, great. Your next step will be the responsibility of a wife and you will submit yourself to that picture. Now, forgive me for going on Jeff, but you've hit a vein here. But this guy that I was talking with um, yesterday I also just felt led to to uh, challenge him on when we think about laying down our lives for our wives, a la uh, Ephesians 5, most men think that means I lose all the arguments. That's what laying down my life means. She wins all the time. We go where she wants all the time. We never visit my family. We always visit her family. There you go. And so that there, I laid down my life. We can do that well enough. You know, guys can suffer and they can roll over. I would submit to you that laying down your life means leading, not, not letting her lead. That would be it. That would be its own kind of suffering. I grant you, but to lead. And when your wife doesn't like the leading or she chafes at it, not to be rude and cruel to her, but to say before God, I'm doing what I think you've told me to do here. It's not always popular, but I lay down my life for my people. And that means I might not be popular on any given day and I might get eye rolls and back talk and I'm supposed to just go. So be it. I'm, I'm, I'm leading before the Lord and I lay down, I sign off my rights to be thought well of at all times. So okay. Can I yeah. throw a post-it note on that? I think yeah. it was, this has stuck with me when I heard him say this. Uh, look, we got the idea of servant leadership. Like, we yeah. got it. Agreed. How about this? How about serving by leading? Yes. And that has so stuck in my brain. Um, let's let's recommend a couple books. You mentioned Todd Henry, and I'd like for you to recommend a, your favorite Todd Henry book. He's a dear old friend of mine. He's here in Cincinnati, and he's a like a business leader guy. I'd love to recommend uh, The Household in the War for the Cosmos. It's an excellent book. Recommend it to everybody. What would you recommend from Todd Henry? 
anything. Uh, it starts with the accidental creative. Uh, it's uh, his stuff is all about how to how to be creative, but don't think of yourself as a creative. Like how to how to do the things every day that make you a more creative thinker. Doesn't matter if you are an artist, and it doesn't matter if you are uh, you know running a business, uh, hanging drywall. Yeah. So just back to the, uh, the, the thread, um, it was a real challenge for me as somebody who's raised in church life to understand the concept that the Lord endorses me <laughs> and that he wants me to go try things. And I, I'm like you, my tendency has always been, Lord, just t- tell me thy will, O God. I'll do thy will. And there are things that he tells us to do. You know, there are definite parameters that he gives us boundary lines. But I always think of the picture of the sheep out in the field. They're in the field that the master wants them in. And then what if the sheep came to him hour by hour and said, what do you want me doing now? This blade of grass? Go, should I eat this one? Should I eat, <laughs> and should I eat this one? Should I eat He'd this be one? like, you're in the field I want you in. Hey, would it be okay if I went and played with this guy? Uh, yeah, do whatever you want. Hey, uh, I was thinking of drinking from that little pond over there. You see that one? In the, that's where I was going to go drink. You're in the field I want you in. It's fine. You'll know if I'm if you're in the wrong spot. You'll that's feel That's right. It. If I need to pop you in the head with a stick, the stick's right here, and I see everything going on. You, I know you're in submission to me. I know that you're doing what I want. Just, Just give it a shot. And if I see you wandering off, oh, those are dangerous woods that you're in. I can come find you and I can come deal with you there, but you're go, just do your thing. So I think that's very challenging for people to, to get to that place. And just to get back to the original thing, I think that starting one's business, working for yourself helps us walk down that road. Okay. Can I tell a little, a little story about a buddy of mine that I think might bring some of this to life. So a uh, good buddy of mine, I don't, I know the Halloween question is always a big question as believers. What do we do with Halloween? Yes. Anyway. So my good buddy, his mom is this very uh, charismatic. Oh, Hey, there are demons everywhere. Oh, just, oh, you gotta. And so <laughs> bless her. And we love her. She is a wonderful woman. And I mean, here she got a lot of cool stuff from her. Sure. So my, my buddy is a father of three children. And his wife over here is like, come on, your mom, give, give me a break. We're going to have a little pumpkin carving thing. And the kids are dressing up like Yodas and stuff. <laughs> okay. So my buddy's in the middle. His mom is going... Jimmy, you really watch this video about how how there are all these demonic roots and even pumpkin carving and even putting on a, a Mandalorian mask that is inviting demons. Oh, and my. I would even say going so far as to say, if you have problems with your children in the future, in their teenage years, this video from I don't know who put the video out it would say it probably stemmed from your kid putting on a mask at Halloween. So Dressing up as a hobo. Whoa. Up, yeah. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> so that's where my buddy was. He was in the middle and he right. was like, well, I hear mom and I don't want to, and we've always been very, you know, it's, it, it, you don't want to look at your mom and go, mom's crazy. Well, she's heard some <laughs> important things from God. So we're not going to flush that. And then over here is come on, Jimmy, give us a break. So, my buddy was stuck in the middle. And so he was like, how do I sort through this, trying to sort through it? And so he watched the video his mom had sent and digested it and talked with his wife and like, yeah, I hear you. We got this thing coming up. What are we going to do? And so he, he was like, well, I think I know what we need to do. And I'm going to call my mom. So he called his mom and he, he, he was, I think he was a little nervous about calling his mom, but he said, hey, mom, I just want you to know I watched that video. Oh, thank you for watching that video. Yeah, I watched that video, Mom, and I just want you to know, I have talked with God about this, and for my family, I'm in charge of my family. He said, my wife is not in charge of my family. Mom, bless you. You're not in charge of my family. I am, and I feel like doing some pumpkin carving and dressing like Boba Fett is okay. (laughs) And his mom goes, 
oh, that is exactly, I, that's what I needed to hear from you. Mm. It wasn't you agree with me yep. and it wasn't you disagree with me. What I love, I mean, it just almost chokes me up, like to watch this guy go, I'm in charge of my family. I take responsibility. Like, I'm taking responsibility, mom. And and I didn't sit and go, gosh, what's the right answer? I went to God mm. and God and I had a conversation and I feel like this is what God has communicated to me. It, it always makes me think of, uh, you remember the movie Captain Phillips uh, with yeah, Tom sure. Hanks and the Somalian pirates? The line in the trailer was always the Somali pirates going, I'm the captain now. No, I'm, I'm the, the captain, captain now. now. Yeah. And Tom Hanks is looking at him and he's not saying a word, but you know, he's thinking, no, you're not. You're not. The captain. I'm still the captain. Yeah. And I think about that so often. Um, That's as great. Fathers like, look, all these other people can say they're the captain and they got these swords at their side. I'm the captain. Yeah. I, I will be the captain. And so I hear you. I hear you. I just love my buddy's story there. So I, hopefully you can cut it out if it doesn't. Oh, that's great. Exhibit what you're talking about. I but. love it. Well, thanks for the update on what's happened to you since you uh, started your business. I think that's really important and I like it. I think we'll just suit what we do. What do you do when you cinch? You, it's like what the what doctors do they make they it's a they burn something closed oh they cauterize it cauterize it Th that's why a lightsaber wound is is not as bad as you would think because it's a self cauterizing wound <laughs> tell that to the tauntaun <laughs> oh he he died long before oh that's true that's true okay well uh thank you jeff we'll talk we'll come back and talk a very near future about credit cards and how you're using what you're doing in your new business uh, for the good of your family. All right. Thank okay. you. And I may be wearing the same shirt. Why, killer? What are you waiting for? Get a move on. Get going. Scram. No, 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 I don't want to. No, no, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no